How's it going everyone? Sean here from Raw Technique Studios and today we're going to be jumping into episode 11 of Raw Fix My Mix. In this one we're going to be looking at a couple tricks on a two-track beat here. We're going to be using Transient Designer, some EQ, and why some things look stereo when they're actually mono. We'll take a look at that. We'll break down the vocal chain and just go through that whole process so you can see how my mix sounded and the person who originally mixed it, how they sounded. We compare them and how you can see that both of them are great mixes. I think that either one could sound great to be released, uh, but it's gonna come down to a preference thing. So mixing isn't just gonna be there's one perfect way to mix a song. There's gonna be multiple ways you can mix a song and it still sounds good. It's gonna come down to preference. All right, so we're gonna look at all of that in Raw Fix My Mix episode 11. Now, if you ever need extra help outside of these YouTube videos, then check out hiphopaudioschool.com, a complete course, over 70 videos, access to a private Facebook group. You get discounts on gear, on all kinds of other things like that. So definitely check it out if you need extra help outside of these YouTube videos. But for now, let's jump into episode 11 of Raw Fix My Mix. We'll start with the recording process for the vocals. And I know you had a couple pictures you sent over, so I have two of them right here. So this setup right here, is this your setup that you're at right now? That's where I'm sitting at right now. Awesome. So when you were recording the vocals, um, did you record both vocals? You said that one of them is recorded on the East Coast, the others were recorded with you? Yeah, so the first and the third verse and the chorus uh -huh. is by my artist and really good friend uh, who goes by J2E. Okay. And those were recorded here at my place okay. in... The central coast california and judah priest verse was recorded um at his home studio in philadelphia okay cool and then when you're recording here at your studio uh what of the, what of the gear were you using during the recording process and um just a little insight on that yeah so the microphone that i use is akg c214 okay and i have the alcatron um filter over it a little bit of Oralex on the wall okay. um, and then I have the mic running through the warm audio um, WA12 MK2 preamp which is the one that's behind my laptop there mm -hmm. and then from that it runs into my warm audio uh, WA76 compressor uh, or limiting amplifier and then from there, it just goes into uh, my interface, which is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. So now that we know how it was recorded, let's take a look, or I guess a listen, uh, to what it sounds like. I'll run it through. I'll just play the um, raw vocal real quick. Okay. Just keep the final limiter on so it's not too quiet. OK. Prime, shine like gems drop from another time. Bring it back like the swing of an X. Counter attack, you smack if you spit in that whack shit. One more. All right, so yeah, it sounds good to me. I think it's a clean sounding recording. So that's a great start, um, is always having that good recording. And that's something I always try to tell people because when they send me songs, like, oh man, like, what is it that I'm doing wrong with the mix? And it's usually the recording is what was the problem. <laughs> so that's something I wanted to point out here. A good recording helps a lot. Instead of tweaking what you had, I just wanted to see how it sounded if I just started fresh on this verse right here. So that's was my main focus was just starting here, getting a chain that sounded pretty good and then uh, redo the master. So I didn't even open up any of your plugins. I just started from scratch to see what it would sound like. But, awesome. Do or die, electrifying like the rock in this prime. Shine like gems drop from another time. Bring it back like the swing of an ax. Counter attack, you smack if you spit in that whack shit. One motion, the eagle's precision with vicious collision. Rip apart the flesh with the scissors, you will snatch in your biscuit. Relax, don't get it twisted. Return of the vengeance, like the cats out of the bag, we survived the blizzard. On time for the richest materialized petitions. Flow below our nose like cold white agendas. With swift knives, they slit and shifted like closed mind pretenders and break through a car. All right, so that's the chain as it, pretty much as I went through it, that's what I was listening to as I made changes. Simply started with a de just to tame the sibilance uh went in with the ssl channel to do some eq took out some of the low end right here um okay. i believe that's yeah maybe a tiny yeah super tiny bump at 8k but that's it right there uh the r comp 
do or die, electrifying like the rock in his prime. Maybe 3 dB of compression at the louder parts. Uh, super not, gentle. Yeah, yeah, not super fast attack. It's just a, it's like a medium attack, I guess. So it sounded yeah. good. Um, I did this with the EQ, trying to tame some of that sibilance drop uh, coming in right here at 9K. And okay. then uh, just there was a little bit of like a buildup. I, I kept going back and forth on whether I wanted the low body in the vocals or not. So this is something I was back and forth on. So here's a little before and after. Do or die, electrifying like the rock in his prime. Shine like gems drop from another time, bring it. So that one's a bit thicker and more natural in the vocal. And I was like, do I want that? And then I ended up deciding maybe I'll go a little bit thinner on the vocal. And I yeah. took that out. So that was something I kept going back and forth on. The parallel compression, I know you had uh, parallel compression set up, sending into it using like an 1176. But um, right. I ended up going just with an H comp and blending it on the mix knob here on the actual uh, aux track. So okay. uh, that's the difference here. Do or die, electrifying like the rock in this prime. Shine like gems drop from another time, bring it back. Same thing that your parallel compression was doing, just thicken it up, make it a little bit more forward in the mix. Yeah. And then uh, a second de-esser just to make sure none of that top end is coming through too much. Do or die, electrifying like the rock in this prime. Shine like gems drop from another time, bring it back like the swing of an X. All right, so like I noticed if I take this off, then you could hear a little bit more of that natural like presence and lip sound type of stuff going on up on the top end. But yeah. I kind of wanted to like back that off just to get a, a little warmer sound to it. So that's why I added in that second yes or there. And then this reverb, I kept going back and forth on whether I want to use it. And I also had another version right here with a more reverb because I noticed on your mix, you had more of a like a kind of like pushed back vocal that kind of sat with the beat better. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, let me try that a little bit more reverb and like give it a bit more of a pushback. Mm -hmm. But I think I prefer the a little bit less reverb and more upfront vocal sound. So I ended up going with uh, only 4% mix on it. Okay. Oh, very light. Yeah. Interesting. And huh. then uh, the delay, I this is where I made a couple changes because uh, I'll just show you. So this is the original delay that you had on it. And okay. it had the phase switch on just the left side which sounds great in stereo, but the second you hit mono, it disappears and you don't have that. Uh, yeah. okay. So I was like, uh, let's change it up and <laughs> make sure just in case somebody listens in mono, like we can still hear it. But, uh, but just for people watching, I'll show how that works and bring up an S1 imager so I could put it in mono. All right, so once I put it in mono, disappears. Put it back in stereo. There it is again. And then to show if you're not in that, it doesn't disappear. Right. Oh, interesting. All right, so it's just that phase switch. It just cancels yeah. it out completely. So that's just something uh, I changed up on here. And to get a similar sound without it disappearing, that's where I came in. And so I, I copied the delay over. Um, Nothing changed except I took the phase switch off the left channel. And then instead of having that to get a little bit more of a spread out sound, I used little micro shift, which could spread it out. But it's not the same as just like a complete phase reversal. It's kind of like its own little spreader. So it's not going to disappear in mono. So here it is with this on. All right, so there's mono, and then when I put it on, you hear it kind of spread out a little bit. Yeah. And then I'll put the whole mix in mono just so we could hear that it doesn't disappear like doing a, a phase reversal. Okay. All right, so it's still there. It just sounds like a double up. So it's more of like a a little bit out of phase, but not a complete 180. That's cool. I've never thought of that. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> also, I noticed on the delay, the original one was, it had that, and it was also at 23% on the uh, dry wet knob, but it was it's being set to from the channel into this aux. Yeah. And then that just, it's to where it's like, because it's not 100% wet, you're getting a double up of the dry signal as well. So it just made it a lot louder. 
So that gotcha. instead of doing that, I just uh, I put it to a hundred percent on mine here, and then on the delay itself, I just back it off, so I don't have to send in as hot. Okay, uh, the beat it's in mono. It, I mean, for a lot of people watching, I know they're gonna be like, well, it looks like it's stereo, but it is mono. <laughs> like if you go in, you could uh, zoom into the waveform and see that it's exactly the same top and bottom. So, yeah. Uh, just oh, I, th that's how it was sent to me. So right. what I think I what I did was no, I actually don't know if I did that or if you did it, but I basically cloned it and put it up to a stereo track. And... Oh, okay. Yeah, a, a lot of people they'll like see stereo. I get this question so much on my YouTube channel, so that's why I just wanted to bring it up. Is that sometimes they'll see vocals in stereo, and that's usually because somebody bounced them down or exported them as stereo even though they're still mono, but it just looks like a stereo signal. So that could be like this, for example, like you said, uh, it could be a stereo, it could be a, a mono signal, but if you want, you could make it look like a stereo signal. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so this one, I just made a little note. It is in mono. So this is what I did to kind of, uh, switch it up here. So here's the beat, uh, as it was, and then I'll put my plugins. <laughs> All right, so kind of dipping out those mids to make room for those vocals, pushing the highs because you can see before the highs were like not there. And then uh, just kind of trying to give the kick drum a little bit more boom to it to kind of come through. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, smack attack. I just wanted to bring out some of those transients a little bit. So here's a little before and after. All right, so it just hits a little bit harder. So I'm actually happy that you use the smack attack. Um, I have it. I'm never exactly quite sure what to do with it. So what mm. what exactly did you do with the smack attack, or what were you looking for? So uh, I was trying to bring up the attack on the kick drum and snares. So okay. that's what I just wanted to stand out a little bit more. So when you're stuck with the two track B, you can't just go and turn up the kick and snare. So uh, this is one way. As long as everything else in the beat isn't too transient where they're going to get pulled up as well because this is specifically bringing up transient so any kicks snares anything that has a hit to it and okay. you could set it to where uh depending on how much you want of it it's going to be right here so just an, as an example i'll show you <laughs> So it's going to okay. bring those, the kick and the, all that stuff up more and more. And then you can set your sensitivity. So maybe you don't want everything to trigger it. You just want some of it. So you could back this off or make it more narrow. Okay. And then the sustain. This is where I don't usually mess with the sustain much on like a two track. But when it comes to maybe like a snare or something like that where I want a heavy transient, I just want to kill the tail of the snare, then I could kill the sustain. And then just as an example, you'll hear on here that all the stuff that isn't a transient coming through, like a kick or a snare, it's going to get brought down. Okay. So you're left with like just the drums pretty much. Gotcha. All right. So that's all I was doing here. And then over here, I have it to where it, I guess it's like clipping off the signal, anything that goes over. And then I put the output down a little bit as well. Okay. Put it all together. We haven't even heard it together. So let's listen to that. Die, electrifying like the rock in his prime. Shine like gems drop from another time. Bring it back like the sweep of an axe. Counter attack, get smack if you spit in that whack shit. Emotion the eagle's precision with vicious collision. Rip Okay, so that's the complete sound. Um, this is, I'll show you the difference on the reverb because this was the thing I was going back and forth with as well. So the one we just heard is a little bit more forward and then here it is with a little bit more reverb, a little bit more pushback. Die, electrifying like the rock in his prime. Shine like gems drop from another time. Bring it back like the sweep of an axe. Counter attack, get smack if you spit in that whack shit. Emotion the eagle's precision with vicious collision. Rip apart the flesh with the scissors, you will snap. 
All right, so both sound good. It's just which one do you prefer type thing, and I kind of prefer the more forward vocal on this one. I yeah, and like you said earlier, I think I had mine set back a little bit more. Uh, right. I think I was trying to tuck it in with the beat opposed yeah. to just letting the vocal stand out on its own. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I actually really like what you did with that. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will ask like, oh, how much, or how do I get my vocal sound more in the beat, more in the beat? But a lot of like hip hop, or not a lot, of, or the older hip hop tended to be a lot of vocals were deep in the beat. Now yeah. vocals are so, so high on top that it's like, you're going to find somewhere in between or you're going to be sounding like Tyga where it's like all vocals and sub and that's it. So it's like, <laughs> it just depends. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just show the back and forth on the um, mix that you sent over, and then we'll just compare to hear the difference between them. Because honestly, I like how yours sounds. You have this like effect to it that it just sounds really like together with the beat. It sounds like um, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just sounds good. But okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's gonna be a preference thing though because I tend to like a more like forward vocal, uh, but some people will probably prefer your mix. Blue is my mix and the orange is your mix. Okay. Sound like gems drop from another time. Bring it back like the sweep of an axe. Counter attack. You smack if you spit in that whack shit. Emotion that equals precision with vicious collision. Rip apart the flesh with the scissors. You will snatch your biscuit. Relax, don't get it twisted. Return of the vengeance. Like the cats out of the bag. We survived the blizzard. On time for the richest materialized petitions. Flow below our nose like coke white agendas. With swift knives, they slip and shifted like clothes. My pretenders and break through a car full of rhymes. Spitters, hot lids with live sets. Okay, so it's going to be a preference thing. Like, I, I really like how yours sounds very cohesive. It's very together. And then for mine, it's just more forward on the vocal. So that's pretty much the difference. And then this verse right here. It's the same plugins, but it's a slightly different chain, and I added in an EQ. So here, this is. Every legend, the ghost phantom that rose from the gravel, the second seed of Adam. Every bar I'm throwing into stars, giving body scars, then party like Mardi Gras. May the Lord grant mercy on your weed controversy asses as I split the masses. Disaster, sinister, strike matches to your ashes, giving 39 lashes. Fashion, you ghetto bastards. The street disciple rifled upon a trifle. So what if I like you? I stand on the top of Eiffel. All right, so it's a very unique vocal, and I was trying to play with like how to work with the the frequencies on it. And um, this is the chain. Let's see, all this is pretty much the same. This is where I oh, know that's the same. I think right here's where I went a little bit different on it, trying to pull out some of that mid range. Uh, I'm doing dynamic EQ to kind of okay. come down at 6,500 hertz just for whenever an S comes through, it kind of just pulls it down a little bit. And then uh, just a small dip here at 400. So here's a little before and after just on this. Average legend, the ghost phantom that rose from the gravel, the second seed of Adam. Every bar, I'm throwing ninja stars, giving body scars, then party like Marty Crawl made the. So the thing that stands out to me is this. Uh, what is it? 1,459 hertz. So I just wanted to treat that. And and then on the EQ, I felt like it was a little bit muffled because of all the like taming I'm trying to do. So here's before. Average legend, the ghost phantom that rose from the gravel, the second seed of Adam. Every bar I'm throwing. And then when I add it in, you hear the vocals kind of come out again. And it's just boosting up at 8K to kind of bring out more of the clarity up on top instead of like in that lower 1 to 5 or 6K region. All right, so that was episode 11. Hopefully you learned something from this. If you need extra help outside of these YouTube videos, check out hiphopaudioschool.com. And if you want to check out the artist that was featured on this, then go ahead and click on that link down below in the description. And I'll have a link to the song that's out on Spotify. It just dropped. So check him out. Check out all the Instagrams and everything like that with everybody involved. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.